In the past, I've done two videos on Batman's Rose Gallery and which lantern cores I think they belong in. Links to which are in this video's description. And this video will be going over another six of Batman's Rogues Gallery and the lantern cores that I think they best belong in. Now, before I start, let me quickly explain what lantern cores are. They are organizations which have rings that give the wearers superpowers. These include energy blasts, energy constructs, and the ability to fly, along with other abilities. And these rings are powered by different emotions and can only be wielded by people who have a strong link to that emotion as a dominant part of their character. These emotions are willpower, fear, avarice, love, rage, hope, compassion, and the white lantern core of life and the black lantern core of death. Now the black and white ones aren't technically a part of the emotional spectrum, but we'll still be considering them as valid options for this video. And with that out of the way, let's get started. Black Mask Black Mask's real name is Roman Sionis, and he is more of a gang lord than a supervillain. Now at first glance, Black Mask looks like he should be in the Black Lantern Corps of Death, but the mask isn't actually because he's obsessed with death, but rather fear. A key part of Black Mask's character is that he always wanted the perfect mask to intimidate the criminals of the world. And sadly, after a fire, his face kind of melted, and the mask that he was wearing sunk into his skin and became a permanent part of him. Though in other versions of his character, this hasn't happened, and it's just a mask that he wears. But the mask was part of his obsession of instilling fear in others, and it would place him in the Yellow Lantern Corps of Fear. And this would be a very good fit for him, as at one point he was the most powerful and most feared gangster in all of Gotham City. But it's actually for those reasons that he isn't in the Lantern Corps of Fear, because Black Mask's real love is for money and power, more so perhaps than any of Batman's rogues gallery, though the Penguin does come a close second. But Black Mask has dedicated all of his life towards money and power. He only cares about making more so he can expand his empire, so he can expand it further and then expand it again and again so that he can go on making more and more. And for that reason he has to be in the Orange Lantern Corps of Avarice. And while it is true that he has the qualities needed for a Yellow Lantern, and incidentally a story of him as a Yellow Lantern could be a good read, but his quest to instill fear in others was only ever a part of his larger goal to acquire more wealth and more power, and to scare others away so that no one will be able to take that wealth and power from him. In short, he only ever used fear to get what he really wanted, money and power, and his greed for those things makes him a perfect fit for the Avarice Lantern Corps. Talia Al Ghul Talia is the daughter of Ra's al Ghul and the mother of Damian Wayne. She is a trained assassin and a high-ranking member of the League of Assassins. In fact, in the past she has even taken over the League of Assassins and led them herself. And bearing all that in mind, you'd be forgiven for thinking that she belongs in the Fear Lantern Corps or the Death Lantern Corps. And although an argument could be made for them, I think that the perfect Lantern Corps for Talia is the Love Lantern Corps. Now, love may seem an odd choice for her, given how she regularly kills without remorse, and that she has manipulated all those around her, including her own son, in horrific ways. But it does make sense when you consider why Talia has done everything that she has done in her life. And all her actions, horrible though they may be, have all come from a source of love. And Talia al Ghul loves all the men in her life with a fierce passion. Ra's al Ghul, Bruce Wayne and Damian Wayne are always on her mind, and in her version of a perfect world, they would all end up as a loving family. Now with Ra's al Ghul, she loved him so much that she did whatever he said without question, though this love was more of a blind loyalty that Ra's al Ghul had conditioned into her. But she was nonetheless dedicated to him and his cause. Now with Bruce Wayne, she did date rape him so that she could have his child, which is a disgusting thing to do. But believe it or not, in her mind, that was done out of love, as she most likely thought that it would draw the two of them closer together. And in a way, it did. And she also thought that Bruce Wayne would be fine with it. And weirdly enough, he does actually seem to be pretty okay with it. He's never really kicked up a fuss about this like most people would. But then Batman's never exactly been the most emotionally stable person. And even though Talia continually manipulates her son and Batman, she doesn't see anything wrong with it, or with hurting others, or rewriting Bruce Wayne and Damian Wayne's memories as she sees fit. To us that sounds horrible beyond words, but in her mind she's doing it to them because she cares about them. And this does seem like a type of psychosis, and in truth it really is. But in spite of everything she's done, she still believes without a doubt that they will forgive her, and that she will one day realise her dream of ruling the world side by side with Bruce Wayne, and with Damian Wayne as their heir. 
Now, it is a terrible form of love that she has, but what could you really expect from a woman raised by a master assassin like Ra's al Ghul? And when you look at how she is, how she acts, and the things she has done to those she cares about, she comes across as a bit of a crazy stalker, the kind of woman who says that she loves you, and then burns down your house so that you have no choice but to move in with her. It's crazy, it really is. I mean, she has even had Damian Wayne killed in the past, though this was just part of her and Batman's villain vs hero game, so in her mind it didn't really matter, and she genuinely thought that Batman would be okay with it, though of course he wasn't. But despite how horrific these events of hers are, it does all come from her own warped sense of love. And so out of all of the lantern cores, I think love is definitely the best fit for her. Firefly Firefly's real name is Garfield Linz, and his lantern core is fairly obvious. As the name suggests, Firefly is absolutely obsessed with fire. He loves arson and watching things burn. Fire is this man's life and in some versions of his character, he actually has third degree burns over almost all of his body because of this obsession. And it's because of this that he has to be in the Red Lantern Core of Rage, as the Red Lantern's very blood is turned into a boiling liquid fire the moment they put on the Red Ring. They burn with a rage that is like fire, and can also vomit a lava-like substance, and out of all the Lantern Cores, this one is exactly the one that Firefly would want the most. Yes, he doesn't always seem to be in the state of great anger, but he is there quite a lot of the time, and he does have a huge amount of resentment, and wants to get a bitter sense of revenge on those that he thinks have done him wrong. Especially in the animated series when the woman he loved scorned him, and so he decided to get revenge by burning her alive, which is a pretty insane way of doing it to be honest. But getting revenge on those who have wronged you is a very big part of being in the Red Lantern Corps, and he's also in the live action version show Arrow, wanting to get revenge on those he thinks left him for dead. So revenge is definitely a part of his character. And because of that, he is 100% a candidate for the Red Lanterns. And once he learned about their fire abilities, he would join up in a second. Now normally I would at least mention other Lantern Corps options, but his affinity for fire and his personality mean that he is 100% best suited for the Red Lantern Corps of Rage and no other. Zaz Victor Zaz is a serial killer who cuts himself every time that he murders someone. He doesn't really have a novelty act gimmick with his crimes like so many others in Batman's rogues gallery. He is a proper psychopath who just loves to kill, and although he has done some novelty acts and puzzles over the years, mainly he is just a violent sadistic killer. And he believes that killing others is a great gift that he is giving to them, and that he is releasing them from a zombie-like state, or as the rest of us would call it, being alive. All of which actually makes him one of Batman's more realistic villains, as someone this demented could very easily exist in the real world. And he really only has two Lantern Corps options. One is the Death Lanterns, and the other is the Lantern Corps of Compassion. Now, Death could be a good fit for him, as it seems to be the only thing that ever occupies his mind. And he is merciless and unrelenting in his quest to kill. Now, he mainly kills young women, but in truth, he doesn't mind killing pretty much anyone. He claims that he is releasing them from their own desires and setting them free. But in truth, he feels no compassion, empathy, or any connection at all with those he kills. He really just loves killing people. Sometimes he even kills for no reason at all. In Telltale Batman, when the Joker scratches him, he attacks and kills a random person, just because he needs to have a murder for every scratch on his body. Which could be a part of his psychosis to be fair, but either way it shows a complete lack of empathy. And he feels no regret or guilt or any feelings of remorse. He feels nothing at all for anyone. The only time he ever seems to be alive is when he's committing murder. And this actually makes him a perfect recruit for the Indigo Lantern Corps of Compassion. And while the Death Lantern Corps could very easily work for Zass, I don't think he really worships Death in the right way. Yes, he is obsessed with Death and he is obsessed with killing people, but he doesn't kill them out of some sort of greater purpose or to offer up a sacrifice. He does it for one single reason. He is a true psychopath with very, very extreme insanity. He kills because of his psychosis. He kills because he has a lack of empathy. And for that reason, I think he's better suited to the Lantern Corps of Compassion. You see, the Lantern Corps of Compassion does take on those who have great amounts of compassion, but it also, and mainly, takes on people who have the exact opposite, vicious murderers and serial killers who have no love, empathy, or compassion for anyone. The core takes them, and it gives them compassion, and it's able to make them understand that their attacks are wrong and become better people. And I think that for Zass, that feels like the right fit. I mean, it really could go either way. He wouldn't exactly be out of place in the Death Lantern Corps. 
but I think the Lamb's Core of Compassion is really the one for him. Lady Shiva. Now, Lady Shiva's real name is Sandra Wusan, and she is one of the finest martial artists in the world, and is considered by many to be the most dangerous woman alive. And with her, the Roni seems to be one real fit, the Yellow Lantern Core of Fear. Everything about her is scary, the way she acts, her disregard for life, and her skill to do whatever she wants to pretty much anyone. And when she does kill, she doesn't seem to do it with any rage or hate like you'd expect. She seems to feel nothing at all. And yet at the same time, she still seems to have a normal person's faculties and emotions. She isn't detached from her empathy or compassion, and she isn't a psychopathic nutjob. She is just a woman who knows that some people have to be killed, and she doesn't mind doing it. To her, it's no different than emptying a bin at home and putting it in the trash. It's just a part of life. And that in itself is part of what makes her so scary. You can't predict what she'll do, as she gives no outward signs of her emotions, and she seems to be just as calm in the middle of a sword fight as she is when she is meditating. And she has cultivated her persona to be one of fear, so that others respect her and are too afraid to cross her. She is also skilled enough to take down pretty much anyone on the planet in a one-on-one -on -one fight. And so fear seems to be the only choice for her, because she is scary. And that is exactly how she wants people to think of her. Deadshot. Now, given his name and the fact that he is one of the most successful assassins in the world and has probably killed hundreds, if not thousands of people, you would think at first that he should belong in the Death Lantern Corps. But the Death Lantern Corps is for those who are either dead, have been resurrected, or actually obsessed with the idea of death itself. And though Deadshot is an amazing assassin, he just doesn't seem to be that obsessed with killing people. Yes, he does seem to enjoy his job, but it's not a vicious sense of enjoyment, it's more a satisfaction at a job well done. But death hasn't taken over his life. He isn't obsessed with death and he doesn't worship a death god, or he doesn't just plain love killing people for the thrill of it. He only kills people if he's getting paid. And in truth, that getting paid seems to be the part he enjoys the most. And the only reason he keeps up the job of an assassin is simply because it pays well and he's damn good at it. So I'm not thinking the death core is a good fit for him. Now, other than his job, the only other thing he seems to enjoy and live for in his life is his daughter, which could make him go in the Love Lantern Corps, but I don't think so. Yes, he does love his daughter more than anything else, but I think we all know he'd never be a good fit in the Love Lantern Corps. And I'm actually thinking that he is best suited to join the Green Lanterns of Willpower. Now, generally speaking, villains aren't supposed to wear the Emerald Ring, but it has happened before and probably will happen again, and actually usually makes for quite interesting stories. But it's not so much being a villain that stops him. All you have to do to get the Emerald Ring is be a person who can overcome great fear, and he definitely fits that category. So he does have the willpower to get hold of one of these rings, and it is possible that once he receives it, he could change his life dramatically and actually become a hero. But I don't think Deadshot would become a hero. I think he would actually become an anti-hero if he got one of these rings. And I don't know if it would all work out in the end, but it does sound like a great idea for a story. But out of all of the different lands and cores, I think willpower is definitely the one for him. As he is a person who can overcome great fear, remain steadily focused in his life and on the task that he is doing, and also has a large amount of control over his own emotions, and quite frankly, just has a great deal of willpower. So I think the Green Lantern Corps of Willpower is definitely the one for him. But what do you think? After all, this is a discussion video and your opinions do matter. So do you agree with the Lantern Corps I have chosen for these characters? Or do you have a different insight to them that makes you think that they belong in a different Lantern Corps altogether? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.